Hey guys, welcome back to another Dragonair Silent Gods video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a summoner team that I've been using for, what well, I've used today for the Mecha Talk endgame boss of season two. So this is a team that I've kind of thrown together. I wasn't sure how to best build and go about these different teams. And um, today I was under a little bit of time pressure, so I've done what I can to get a team together. I'm quite happy with the result, uh, but it may see some, see some tweaks over the next few days. Before I get into that though, I do just want to say a huge thank you once again to the sponsor of this video, Dragonair Silent Gods. So thank you guys very much for supporting my channel and allowing me to continue to produce content like this. And as well as that, if you are watching and you are interested in getting involved in Dragonair or supporting my channel, please do click the link in my description or the pinned comment and get involved today. So the team I've been using, well I've been, I've used today rather, I have already run the run and saved that. So I will show you in the drilling ground is as you can see here. So the tank I've been using is Horus. So I've got him built with a good amount of accuracy, a good amount of HP and defense. And he is wearing the Ancestral Protection set. This is to allow him to reduce the damage the rest of my team are taking and obviously get a bit of damage reduction from himself as well. In terms of artifacts, I'm wearing the Crown of the Unclean on him. This is just because I was testing out to see whether you could get an extra stack of the boss's debuff for Defense Penalty 1 and Defense Penalty 2. Doesn't look like it, I'm afraid. Um, I will have to do some more testing and watch a bit closely because it, there's, there's a lot going on that it's hard to pick up everything. Um, but anyway, moving on, I've got my healer and that is Elminster Ormar. So Elminster is not upgraded. His skills are completely baseline. And I do not have the artifact for him, I'm afraid. I will be getting it in the next few days, and then I will obviously equip that to my team. Um, but for the time being, I am wearing the Antonia's tiara for him to increase his enlightenment and the shields he's putting out. I've got him built in the Mona Lisa set just to increase the healing as well, because he is the only support in my team. It just helps to, well, I say that there is one kind of semi-support in my team as well. But it helps him to help keep everybody else alive for as long as possible. Next up, I've got my Zarloth. So Zarloth is my um, well, is in charge of Witch's remains in my team because his ultimate skill hits so many times. But that's not all for Zarloth. So Zarloth is also very good for this fight due to the fact he brings fear. Whenever fear is placed on the boss or the adds, it does get taken by the boss as well. It does reduce the amount of damage he does by, I, I believe it's 30% off the top of my head. So this really helps with surviving this fight. Outside of that, I've got my Zarloth built with a large amount of attack. And the reason for that is his passive skill and his ultimate skill heal based on the amount of attack he's got whenever he's dealing damage. In terms of sets, I've got my Zarloth built in the Cyril set. And this is because every time he places a debuff, he is then granting 15% attack to the rest of the team. Next up, I've got my first damage dealer and that is Zadok. So Zadok is built with 100% crit rate uh, a good amount of crit damage and a good amount of attack in the Inventor set. I may play around with some different sets in the coming days on my Zadok just to see if I can get some more out of him. Um, but in terms of artifacts, I'm wearing the Gravitrix's Roots, which you get for completing the Famiander in Season 2. So it gives a huge amount of attack and HP, even more so if you are using it on a non-legendary hero like I am here. So Zadok is gaining 30% HP and 30% attack on top of the already 60% attack and 7.7 thousand HP. So this is a really impactful artifact and allows him to pump a huge amount of damage. As you'll see before the run starts, I do have my Zadok placed in the middle and this is to allow him to hit all of the adds with his frontal cone damage. Um, but you will see that throughout the run. Just make sure if you're using Zadok, place him in a similar position to me because otherwise he's not going to be getting maximum effect out of that three lane ultimate skill. Next up, I have Premtzer. So Premtzer is the final person in my team. As you can see, she's built with 102% crit rate, 203% uh, crit damage, and a good amount of attack. I've actually never used Premtzer, uh, Premtzer before. This was the first time I'd ever used her. Her skills aren't upgraded. Um, I do have her built with the Arcane Music Box to get that extra crit rate for her build, but also to get an extra 20% damage whenever she has a shield. This is great because I'm using Elminster, I have a shield nearly all of the time, so the uptime on that 20% damage buff is relatively high. Uh, she is also in the Inventor set. As I said once again, I will be trying out some different builds in the next few days, but time was against me, so I had to improvise and come up with a team that was going to get me a good place on the rankings today, and I was really happy with how this team turned out. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'll jump into the run and we well, I'll leave that for you guys to watch. I'll be back at the end of the run and we'll talk about how it went. And there we go. So that is the end of the run. It did only last for six and a half minutes instead of the whole eight minutes. I'm hoping that once I've got the uh, artifact for Elminster, that survivability will change because Elminster will be able to gain an additional amount of shields. He'll also gain more enlightenment. And on top of that, his shields will last longer. So I'm hoping that that will make the difference and help them survive that additional one minute 30. However, if not, it may be a case of needing to look into investing in some skills for him, especially on that battle skill, just to reduce the cooldown. Um, but I'm not sure how necessary it will be. I'll obviously keep an eye on it over the next few days and uh, work around that and see what I can do to make this team survive the full eight minutes and wiggle out a little bit more damage. But in terms of the damage, if we have a look, Zadok did a huge amount at 45, um, well, yeah, 45.9 million damage, which was 42.4% of my team's total damage. Prentzer came in at 34 million damage and uh, Zalop did 20 million damage, but he also did 11 million healing, which, uh, is it 11 million, sorry? Yes, <laughs> no, it's not, sorry, 1.1 million healing. So yeah, it, it really did help with the extra healing he was actually putting out because it helped keep me topped up between the shields from Elminster. Um, but he also did bring a huge amount of damage and very importantly, he brought Witch's Remains and reduced the boss's damage by a significant amount as well. So that is all for this team today. And um, as I said, in the next few days, if I make any tweaks and changes and they're worth throwing into a different video, then I will do that. Um, but other than that, just a huge thank you to the guys to, well, for watching the video today. And uh, just once again, a huge thank you to Dragonair Silent Gods for supporting my channel. Do remember, if you are interested in playing Dragonair and you're not already, or you'd like to support my channel, please do click the link in the description or the pinned comment. But other than that, I'll see you in the next video and best of luck to your fight against the endgame boss.